Once upon a time in Oyo town, a place known for its peace and quiet, the bustling market was the only thing breaking the silence. Traders chattered as they went about their business, eager to sell their goods and head back home. Suddenly, a dark shadow loomed over the market, spreading fear and panic among the people. It was the angry bed Akala, rumored to bring back those who had died prematurely. The traders scattered in terror and even a mother nearly forgot her baby in the chaos. But it was just a dream, the town's high priest realized as he woke up. Now, why is Akala angry in the first place? Well, it all goes back to the powers Arula Kes took from it when it raised Taru from the dead. Akala wants those powers back and until they are returned, it has unleashed its vengeance on the town, causing chaos, deaths and animosity between the people of Oyo and the neighboring town, Ede. Meanwhile, Saru, who was killed in the village of Udrumo when he failed to resurrect their prince, miraculously comes back alive. Let's rewind and recall events that led to this point. Saru was caught having a secret relationship with Arulake, the king's wife in Oyo town. As punishment, he was put to death. However, the Akala bed intervened and brought him back to life. Arulake, in a corny move, stole the magical guard from Akala and gave it to Saru, granting him the power to bring the dead back to life. This earned Saru the nickname Aniklapu, meaning the one who holds death in his paws. Together, Saru and Arulake fled to the village of Ojumo, where Saru gained popularity. However, his infidelity and pride led to his downfall. He started making unreasonable demands on the villagers before using his power to raise the dead. Arulake, upon discovering that Saru had requested the king's daughter in exchange for resurrecting the prince, sabotaged his power and left him. As a result of his actions, Saru lost control over death and failed to resurrect the prince ultimately leading to his demise once again. Now, he finds himself resurrected but unable to comprehend his surroundings. One moment he's alone and the next he's surrounded by people walking in a single direction. Curious, he joins them and soon realizes they are heading towards the gates of heaven. Along the way, he notices some souls who have turned into statues, frozen in their state. Upon reaching the gates, the gatekeeper examines each soul before allowing them to pass through. However, when it comes to Saru, he is denied entry. He realizes that he was once involved with the power of Akala and until he retrieves the souls of the 20 people he resurrected, he will not be permitted to enter the afterlife. Disobedience would condemn him to become one of the lost souls turned into statues. The gatekeeper entrusts Saru with a pendant that he must use to retrieve the souls, warning him never to lose it. Saru is then sent on his way. As he awakens on a familiar hill glowing with a green light, he notices a group of crows gathered around something. Shooing them away, he approaches and realizes with horror that it's his own decomposing body. He realizes that he has no physical body to return to and is essentially a ghost. As he wanders into the town, he is ignored by the living, who pass through him as if he were nothing. He spots a woman he had resurrected and follows her to her house. Realizing that he has no choice but to fulfill the task assigned to him by the gatekeeper, even if it means collecting the soul of the nursing mother. He proceeded to retrieve two more souls, but on his fourth attempt, he encountered a blind old woman who could surprisingly see him. She had been ungrateful when he resurrected her, and now, old and blind, she no longer wanted to die. She proposed a solution to Saru, the possibility for him to become a living ghost. However, she made it clear that this would only happen if he spared her life. Saru agreed to attempts and followed her instructions meticulously. He buried his body and took the sand from the grave to a distant location, far away from his burial site. Meanwhile, in Oyo town, Pashogun, the high priest, shared his vision with the king, revealing that Akala's anger was the root cause of the chaos. The only solution, he claimed, was to return Arolake to the town and make a sacrifice to appease the enraged bed. However, the guards sent to search for her reported that she was dead. Back to Iluaja, Saru was awoken by a young boy and realized with astonishment that he could now be seen, and the green glow surrounding him had now vanished. Excitedly, he ventured into the village but soon found himself plagued by hunger, a consequence of his newfound mortality. Lacking the means to purchase food, he could only watch others eat. However, he soon discovered that he was not alone. The ghosts of the people whose souls he had retrieved were haunting him. 
Acknowledging their presence, Saru confronted them. They informed him that until he escorted them to the afterlife, they would remain his dependents. Unwilling to return to the afterlife so soon after regaining his life, Saru negotiated with them, striking a deal to grant him three years before fulfilling his end of the bargain. In exchange, they provided him with food to starve off his starvation. Thus began Saru's reliance on a ghost. Recognizing that he could not survive as a laborer, they supplied him with a large quantity of palm wine to sell. His product, unlike anything seen before, was sweet and unfermented, quickly overshadowing the competition and attracting customers away from Baba Kurongwi. In addition to his newfound sources, Saru found himself falling for Baba Kurongwi's daughter. Despite her father's request for her to uncover the secret behind Saru's sources, she ultimately chose to support Saru, breaking her father's heart in the process. As these events unfold, the ghost watched from the sidelines, anxiously anticipating the conclusion of the remaining year they had agreed upon with Saru. They knew he would seek a way out of the agreement and indeed, Saru began to search for an escape route. Meanwhile, in Oyo town, there was a lot of tension between Oyo and Ede. Bashorun, the king's warrior and advisor, wanted to build a military outpost in Ede's land, but the people there and even some of his own folks didn't agree. They thought it would ruin any chance of peace later. Bashorun didn't care much about that. He thought they needed to show they were strong and having weapons would do that, but the king didn't want to pay for it or the marriage of their children would be betrothed, which made Bashorun really angry. He even stopped going to the king's meetings. He and Fashogun, the high priest, agreed the king didn't listen to advice. When Fashogun told Bashorun about the angry bear's cause and how to fix it, Bashorun decided to get to the bottom of things. He questioned Adegun, the guard who said Arolake was dead and figured out he was lying. Bashorun then made him tell the truth to the king and council. Adegun confessed that after months of looking for Arolake, he got bitten by a snake and died. It was Saru and Arolake who brought him back to life. They made him lie about Arolake's death and Saru then paid him off. After his confession, Adegun got thrown in jail and the king ordered a search for Arolake to start again from Ojumo, where she was last seen but they couldn't find her there. Bashorun thought the king should do more like offer a reward for finding Arolake but the king didn't like being told what to do, especially by Bashorun which made their fight even worse. Something you should know about Bashoro is, he doesn't involve himself in anything that wouldn't benefit him directly. He's very ambitious and would even use his own son to get whatever he wants. His mistress Awaru, yes, the same businesswoman Saru had an affair with when he first got to the town, known for her promiscuous ways with younger men. She has problems doing business in Ede town and Bashoro, being a knight, swiftly came to her aid. Well, you know what they say, they order the berry, the sweeter, the juice. <laughs> anyway, aside that, the revelation that Saru had the power of the Akala and could raise the dead put Bashoro on a searching spree for Saru because he needed that power for himself and with it, he would be unstoppable. The only person capable of finding Saru is Adegun since he had found him before, so he releases him to search for Saru within two weeks with the promise that he would give him his freedom when he does. Meanwhile, Queen Arolake, tired from her days of travel to a new community, gets spiked and injured in her leg. Fortunately, some other travelers came to her aid and because she claimed to be going their way, they helped her. They provided temporary medication to her injuries which seemed to work but she was too exhausted to go on after a while and while the woman and her family lived, her brother named Akin hesitated a bit before leaving her too. The forest wasn't the best place to rest. She knew this but was ready to take her chance. Night came and some mystical creatures came with it. They looked human but had distinctive features. Looking around, she realized her surroundings too had changed. An old woman approached Arolake and gives her some tasks which she carried out and when she was done, the old woman hands her a purse to live with. But it turns out to be a vivid dream and on waking up, Akin who had come back for her was there. The pause the old woman had given her was on her too, meaning the events actually happened. Akin takes Arolake to his sister's home where he also lives and they welcomed her warmly. They gave her food and a place to sleep. Over time, Akin helps her find a job and sometimes stays back to protect her from those who might harass her because of her beauty. He also starts to develop feelings for her and wants to know more about her but she refuses to share any real information about herself aside from her name. She started to crave independence and what she aims couldn't pay for a house. It was at this point she found out the contents of the post 
it contained endless money like a stream that never runs dry. With money not being a problem now, she purchased a huge house which leaves Akin with a lot of questions. But recalling she once trusted someone who ended up betraying her, she lied about the source of her wealth. She became so rich that her house was filled with servants. All around the town she built houses and the townspeople knew her name because of her generosity and it seems she finally got what her heart always longed for, wealth and love. As the last year of Saru's agreement with the ghost was about to run out, so did the favors they provided. His drums of pound wine became as empty as a politician's promises after election day. He was so desperate but the ghosts were more desperate and ready to steal their necklace and probably lead themselves to the afterlife. Ola Torera, his wife couldn't see them but he knew they could harm her so he takes her in, even more making her anxious. He was about to reveal everything to her but she knew already that he's haunted by ghosts. From the nightmares he gets to the times he talks by himself, in fact she had known for a long time but because she loved him, she acted oblivious. She tricks him to the stream for privacy knowing the ghost wouldn't follow and hints of a solution to his problems, revealing to him that she was ready to talk through them with him. Meanwhile, Arolake's generosity in the town didn't go down well as the receivers ended up feeling restless and beginning to question her source of wealth. This raises concern for her well-being and Akin makes her aware of it and because she had told him little things about her past, he got to find out the king of Oyo town had a reward for her capturer. This made them worried about safety so they hired more guards. Also, from now on, she will wear a veil when she goes out. At this point, she was tired of the constant running and hiding. The only solution was to plead for mercy from the king to spare her life which might work since she was once his favorite wife. To do this, she must go back to Oyo town while disguised as a rich widowed visitor who after her beloved husband's death refused to remarry and concealed her beauty in a view to ward off every man. For this idea to work, nobody must know her real intent including a king who she sent to the king with gifts and to ensure protection from the king when she chooses to visit. Until she decides to visit, she continues to bring the king gifts and a king grew a relationship with him even eating in the same table as him. One of those days, as he left, the king's wives who want to know the true identity of the mystery woman sent someone to tell Akin back to her. Akin! If you liked the video so far, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Stay tuned for the remaining episodes in the next video and do click on the description for the link.